Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. 3,000 households to be targeted during St. Lucia's second multiple indicator cluster survey. The Government Employee Assistance Program broadens its reach. The St. Lucia Red Cross celebrates its 70th anniversary. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueur. The Government of St. Lucia and the United Nations Children Fund UNICEF signed a Memorandum of Understanding to formalize plans for the implementation of St. Lucia's second multiple indicator cluster survey, referred to as the MIX. It is one of the largest sources of statistical information on the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, particularly on children, women, men and the households they live in. The survey will be conducted during September to November 2019 and is expected to provide data on 33 SDG indicators. A sample of 3,000 households will be selected to include all districts on a range of topics in education, safety and protection, health and nutrition, water and sanitation, and multidimensional poverty. Here's Chevron Marius. The government of St. Lucia, supported by UNICEF, has achieved a milestone in social planning with the launch of the sixth phase of the Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, MIG-6. On Wednesday, May 15, 2019, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, along with the Department of Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation, hosted the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding with the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, to familiarize plans to examine the status of women and children around the island. The MIX is an international survey that is developed by UNICEF to gather data on the situation of children and examine issues such as education, social protection, health and water sanitation. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment said that given our current thrust to transform the social protection landscape is in keeping with the Ministry's mandate to facilitate the development of targeted interventions. MIX is a global research program designed to provide statistically sound and internationally comparable data for various social indicators and is targeted at key segments of the population, women, children, the vulnerable and the marginalized population groups. In that context, this survey is particularly important for us at the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, given our current thrust to reform the social protection landscape and to advance that agenda in a manner that allows for purposeful, targeted and relevant interventions to address deficiencies or gaps in our programming and in our product or service offering. UNICEF representative Dr. Olois Kamaragi emphasized the need for Caribbean countries to collect statistical data to assist policymakers in monitoring the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. We have to account to the people we serve where we are in terms of impl implementing the development agenda. How can you objectively account for to the, your people when you don't have evidence, you don't have data? We're talking about this global agenda, the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. How, can, how could we account for the progress made by St. Lucia if we don't invests in data. So that, uh, I'm so happy to see that um, uh, St. Lucia took the decision really to roll out, to implement the, the mix. For instance, the mix shows the vast majority of CSEC passes is higher in girls. This means that more boys and girls leave secondary school without having achieved CSEC passes in English and mathematics since 2011. This signals that there is a need to improve literacy and numeracy among the general population. Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montoot, expressed confidence that advocacy in children and women will increase and stakeholders will be better able to determine which efforts should be focused on as policies are developed to improve the conditions of women and children in St. Lucia. Moreover, MIX-6 will reach an additional 1,000 households with a sample of 3,000 households. 
These strides will demonstrate that St. Lucia is well on its way to attaining some of the goals of the Sustainable Development Agenda. The report was made available in February of this year, and it has provided St. Lucia with the foundation to generate robust programs and interventions to ensure the well-being of this population in a more comprehensive, equ equitable, and rehabilitative manner. In 2012, St. Lucia carried out an inaugural multiple indicator cluster survey, which provided St. Lucia for the first time with a comprehensive set of baseline indicators on children. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. Permanent secretaries throughout the public service converged at the Public Service Training Institute at Union on Thursday, May 16, 2019, for the first in a series of emotional health workshops. More on this report from Julita Peter. The emotional health workshops are being conducted under the Employee Assistance Program of the Department of the Public Service to equip permanent secretaries, deputy permanent secretaries, and human resource officers with the requisite knowledge and listening skills to be able to provide support to employees who are in need of assistance. Peggy Ann Sudat is a permanent secretary in the Department of the Public Service. Yes, we've recognized an increasing number of cases in the public service of people suffering from some form of emotional distress or mental illness. And so we have decided to bring in persons, the PSs, um, to really discuss the issue, to get information on the issue, to identify you know, how we could, um, how we recognize signs of mental illness, um, emotional distress, and to have discussions on how we could provide a support system for persons who are going through these problems. Robert Huggins, an EAP counselor, facilitated Thursday's workshop, which covered several areas, including mental illness and creating a supportive culture for staff to be open about their mental health. The main thing coming out of this is really understanding how to develop a culture of understanding within your organization that makes people feel comfortable enough to be able to come forward and speak about the issues. You see, mental illness shouldn't be treated as something to be stigmatized. Um, it should be treated much the same way that a person has a, a physical disability. You know, if they go into um, diabetes treatment or whatever it is, in, in that same way. So if there's some to be made little changes within the workplace to accommodate them, you do that in the same way that you put a ramp for somebody with difficulty walking, etc. One area that we covered was talking about how the physical space can be so important to promoting positive well-being, mental well-being. We took the opportunity to go out to the back because here, um, the, the training center at the back where the EAP does their, their counseling, um, there's a lovely garden, right? And that garden, I mean, many people talk about when they go there and from the moment they enter, there's sort of a feeling of peace and well-being as they enter the area. And that's the sort of thing we're trying to encourage. The EAP unit will be hosting a similar workshop on May 23rd for Deputy Permanent Secretaries and Heads of Departments. A third workshop has been planned for May 30th, this time bringing together human resource officers. The Employee Assistance Program was established in 2016 to provide confidential counselling services to government officers and their immediate family members. So far, public sector employees have benefited from workshops on time management, stress and anger management, team building, conflicts management, and emotional coping. Julita Peter, Department of the Public Service Communications Unit. Lisa Arthur Lewis Community College continues to take strides to provide students with quality education through partnerships with reputable universities in the region and globally. The college has signed another memorandum of understanding, this time with Johnson & Wales University, an institution with which the college has had a long-standing relationship. The new memorandum of understanding will, among other things, provide students from both institutions the option of doing semesters abroad, develop academic collaboration for students and faculty exchange programs, and explore opportunities for joint research programs. The college recently signed an MOU with Niagara University, focused on the training of teachers. Primary care public health professionals are expected to become equipped with the leadership skills to enable them to perform effectively in the delivery of health services around the island. More from Fennel Neptune. The London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, in collaboration with Health Education England, recently facilitated a leadership training aimed at increasing the confidence of primary care leaders in the delivery of patient care services in St. Lucia. Associate Dean of Health Education England, Claire Inkster, says this training is important 
as it will empower the primary care leaders to make changes and enable service transformation. We measure health care quality in a variety of ways. So we want the health care to be safe and people not to be harmed by um, accidents or errors. Uh, we want the treatments that people are accessing to work. We want it to be effective. Um, but in some ways, just as important, we want people to have a good experience of their health care. And that's something that we're already hearing from the team this morning, um, that it's important that people um, don't have an unpleasant time when they're at a very difficult time in their lives. Um, and there are other things like making sure that people have access to the health care that they need. So we will be asking the teams to implement um, improvement projects um, which will hopefully have these types of benefits for the patients in, in their areas. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma george says this training is timely and crucial to improving the delivery of excellent health care. We know the importance of effective leadership and especially in, in health in terms of strengthening leadership within the Ministry of Health and leadership with a lot of our, our programs. Um, public health and primary care is one of the very important um, areas within health in terms of strengthening preventative care and also surveillance of diseases and a lot of our heads are the ones who manage our programs. So this leadership training is very timely as we do have some new members of our team who may not have had it and some persons who definitely need a, a refreshment um, training. The leadership training focused on key areas such as foundation of leadership, quality improvement in leadership, and action planning for service delivery to name a few. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funal Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The second round of matches in the secondary school's cricket competition took place Thursday at the Balata Plain Field. Under 15 boys, Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary defeated Cicero Secondary convincingly by 10 wickets. Cicero Secondary taking first knock after being inserted by Leon Hess was dismissed for 30 in 8.4 overs. The cheap destroyer with the ball for Leon Hess Comprehensive was off spinner Lee John with impressive figures of 6 for 11. The other main wicket takers was Shashim George with 2 for 1. Set a victory target of only 31. Leon has comprehensive race to victory in just two overs, finishing on 31 without loss. Opening batsmen Ken Elcock and Seanil Edwards remained undefeated on 10 and 4 respectively. At the Grosile playing field, Sir so Ira Simmons Secondary completed a comfortable six-wicket victory over Vidbutai Secondary. Vidbutai batting first, dismissed for 17 16 overs. Nickel Leo making 21 and KS Dupils 14. Bowling for Sir Ira Simmons, Russell Cadet claimed 4 for 8, Rick Gabriel 3 for 3 and Ray Joseph 2 for 11. In reply, Sir Ira Simmons finished on 71 for 4 in 19 overs, Jesse George remaining on 12 not out. The wicket takers for Vidbutai were Mekai Alfred with 2 for 3 and Nickel Leo 2 for 5. At the Larry Seuss playing field in the Marbella Valley, Antipo Secondary had a bet of Graniville Secondary, defeating them by 34 runs. Antipo Secondary batting first, dismissed for 106 in 19.2 overs, with female player Zayda James top scoring with 34, Karin Knight 16, and Christian Kade 14. Bowling for Granivere Secondary, Joshua Fletcher took 4 for 14 and Nequan Henry 2 for 3. 
when he plied Granivier's secondary bowl out for 72 in 16.3 overs, with Theo Edward and Ali John contributing 16 each. Bowling for Antipo secondary, Tolin Charles picked up 3 for 14, Jaden Burke 2 for 11, and Zayda James 2 for 17. And on the PI playing field, VA4 Comprehensive defeated PI secondary by 53 runs. VA4 Comprehensive batting first made 117 all out in 17 overs, with David Nature making 33 and Zidane Charles 12. Alvin Brown was PI's best bowler with impressive figures of 7 for 22. In reply, PI secondary dismissed for 64 in 22.1 overs, with no batsmen reaching double figures. The leading wicket takers for VA4 Comprehensive. David Natrum, 3 for 18, Noah Pilty, 2 for 5, and Hansi Mason, 2 for 12. Inter-District's Primary School's female football competition came to a close Friday, with District 6 coming out victorious, 2 goals to 1 against District 1 in the finals played at the South Plain Field VG. Jordel Emery and Kashima Inns with goals in the 12th and 20th minutes respectively scored for District 6 while Ninan Moses scored as early as the third minute for District 1. Moses also scored in the 20th minute in the semi-finals against District 8 in a 1-0 win, while District 6 beat District 4 three goals to one in their semi-final. Scoring for District 6 were Jordel Emery in the second and 10th minutes and Kishirma Inns in the 12th. Kayla Samuel scored for District 4 in the sixth minute. District Eight finished third place with a 3-1 win over District 4 in a playoff game to decide third place. Amaya Emanuel in the ninth, Tia Ogis 12th and Tana George 15th were the scorers for District 8, while Chloe William converted for District 4 in the second minute. With those final results from Inter-District Primary School's female football, we come to the end of your update from Youth Development and Sports for this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Red Cross joins the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies in celebrating the nearly 14 million Red Cross and Red Crescent volunteers around the world who provide a lifeline to countless communities in need. The commemoration comes as the St. Lucia Red Cross marks its 70th anniversary. World Red Cross Red Crescent Day 2019 comes as the St. Lucia Red Cross celebrates 70 years of existence under the theme 70 Years of Commitment to Humanity. Each year, the National Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies use the day to highlight the unique role of the Red Cross and Red Crescent in their countries. The National Society launched a calendar of activities to celebrate this milestone with a church service and rally. Marva Edward Oculia is the communications officer at the St. Lucia Red Cross Society. Our journey, although it is 70 years, but given where we are at in this national society, it is just the beginning and we know there is a lot more that we can do for St. Lucia and we will continue to do. To help St. Lucia to protect its health, to support those most vulnerable and to continue to share the work of Ori Duna, our founding father. Hubert Pierre, president of the St. Lucia Red Cross Society, stated that the society is continuously growing and stronger than ever before. And um, there is determination and um, I know the St. Lucia Red Cross is here to stay and the St. Lucia Red Cross will be, continue to be auxiliary to the government and they'll do all in their power to ensure that there's a level of safety and there's a level of the strengthening of health. We're going to work with our community continually to make sure that we do the dent. We have entered an area which we didn't before and that was the ambulance service and now it has mushroomed into such that there's a greater demand upon us to continue with the ambulance service. This we are going to do. We are seeking to establish um, Viewfort, the branch, by putting on a building which we hope to open in October. On Wednesday, May 8, 2019, the contributions of the St. Lucia Red Cross were showcased at an open house at the Red Cross headquarters where individuals got an opportunity to get discounts on first aid and CPR training. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Lemon 
qui n'est pas bien estené et bien tout ça, mon qui a bonne santé au lieu de respirer ces vermines là, mon qui panie bon tes pèlement, qu'on sait qu'il y a une maladie HIV, alcool, caféine, tu m'as mal et moi mon bien sensible pour ces maladies ça là, mon qui a tout ça n'est pas prend proportion les yo en parmi mon en place publique, couvert bouche ou les cas estené et tout ça, visitez docteur et bien place santé. Fini tout traitement yo ba ou pour sa joine guérison et puis maladie TB. En responsabilité ou aider du bout si mes maladie TB et HIV protéger corps et les autres. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Merci au temps Nisha. Mes et mesdames département qui est responsable pour information en gouvernement c'est le GIS à sa petite télévision. National PIA NTN, Kapuzato, Novella Creole, Puzato, Primus Hutchinson. Programme des affaires vision qui en cause des maladies Pisadou, j'ai aussi vu bon félicitations pour le progrès que j'ai fait depuis l'implémentation à l'année 2017. Les officiers de l'école des médecins qui ont adressé ces maladies là en Londres ont visité cette liste pour faire un assessment des progrès. Le comité a déjà fait depuis le programme de la en opération. Le consultant technique du programme, Dr. Kova Baskaran, dit qu'il te plaît et puis la façon que le programme pour adresser les problèmes de vision par une cause de maladie puis ça nous. Ça marche bien à cette ci Il dit il dit aussi que ça a fait possible pour discuter et des marches qui j'apprends pour délivrer le service pour adresser les problèmes de vision à cette ci Dr. Baskaran déclaré aussi qui a tenu une discussion et puis sécurité permanente avec aussi chef officier médical pour renforcer la capacité du programme et pour faire assurer que tout changement reste en façon qui est supposé. Il y a aussi discuté et puis sécurité permanente, la nécessité pour réviser le service pour traitement de à cette ci Officier médical de santé, Dr. Sharon Belmont George, remarque qu'il est même très plein que la discussion a fait l'occasion pour préparer une meilleure direction pour service de traitement de à cette ci il a ajouté qu'il est satisfait côté Jaoui Véro présentement et pour aussi procurer un service nouveau pour le public. Là. Il dit qu'en ligne de plan pour avancer, il est aussi plein pour savoir qu'il a des assistance finance pour procurer un service pour tout le monde qui n'a pas d'assistance de traitement de Spectacle Jazz dans les salles qui était organisé en collaboration et puis Jazz à Lincoln Center. J'ai aussi une grande félicitation pour plusieurs publications régionales et internationales. C'est aussi en collaboration et puis Jazz à Lincoln Center, qui est une institution qui a porté Golonais, qui a présenté plusieurs facilités pour les membres médias qui ont apporté Festé Jazz à PIA. Pour te faire ça, assurer que Gymnage Sala trouvait la qualité et la publicité qui était méritée. Autorité des affaires touristiques qui porté et uh, 5, 25 journalistes qui ont fait ce jazz là, qui ont dit que pour une semaine, ces journalistes, ces journalistes là ont représenté les grandes publications comme un pays Canada, l'Angleterre, Martinique, Guadeloupe et Trinidad. Ces si médias ont trouvé l'occasion pour assister à plusieurs spectacles, pour te chaîne et interview et puis les artistes, et puis pour te visiter le web LTP cette ci Pour te Officiellement, bienvenue à l'association de Tchénion Gouan a fait un hôtel Coco Pam, vendredi le 10 mai. Ces journalistes ont profité de l'occasion pour causer puis les artistes comme Russell Hall et Bill Project et aussi même association Spectacle Jazz là a tué un bout de pays. Tchénion a tué un bout de pays, un grand spectacle jazz à la gospel dimanche le 12 mai à l'établissement Shangri-La à Monchi. Festival qui a continué en uh, mois de juin et juillet, après ça, et puis Carnival. Carnival de saint Sol qui a pris le 23 pour le 25 en mois de août. Association producteur WOM et l'autre boisson en Caraïbe, a fait une grande conférence en cette ci et puis complètement pour renforcer la collaboration et le secteur touristique PIA. Selon les groupes grec association là, WOM c'est plus gros produit agricole en ce pays anglais Caraïbe qui a fait contribution de plus de 300 millions de dollars à taxes pour l'économie régionale. Le ministre des Affaires touristiques, Dominique Fédé, promet une continuation de ce gouvernement pour ces produits Caraïbes-là, côté qui a aidé plus de 40 millions d'étrangers tous les années. Le ministre des Affaires commerce et business a offert ce 
pour produire un accord blanc, pour plus avancer à la compétition ni en région et international. Directeur Jérôme pour, pour cette loi de Stélas, Margaret, mon plaisir, déclaré qu'il a discuté avec euh, l'autre CG pour augmenter la production et pour faire assurer que ces hommes ont trouvé euh, tout traitement qui est nécessaire à Kaïbla même. Monsieur, madame, ça se côté de notre bout de nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous invite à vous et puis moi encore. Et de, si Dieu conserve la vie, continuez à présenter l'autre nouvelle à Kouyol. Je vous souhaite une bonne fin de semaine et je vous souhaite de présenter Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Winds will be blowing from the east near 18 miles per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean over the next few days. A weak low-level trough will bring some cloudy periods with showers mainly over the southern Windward Islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.24 p.m. and will be low again at 8.16 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was high at 4.31 p.m. and will be high at 9.43 p.m. The seas slide to moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.36 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.